The number of a spanning trees of a graph, the adjacency matrix of a graph, surprisingly, can be used to compute the number of all spanning trees of that graph. To see this, we first need to extend our investigation to directed graphs. If a G is a directed graph, then we say that H is a spanning tree of G. If H is a subgraph of G, and if we remove the orientations of all H's, obtaining the undirected graphs G1 and H1, then H1 is a spanning tree of G1. We need one additional definition before we can enumerate spanning trees. Definition 10.19. Let G be a directed graph without loops. Let the set V1, V2, V3 until Vn denote the vertices of G, and let the set E1, E2, E3 until Em denote the edges of G. Then the incidency matrix of G is the M by M matrix A defined by Aij is equals to 1 if Vi is the head of Ej, Aij is equals to minus 1 is if Vi is the tail of Ej, and Aij is equals to 0 otherwise. Theorem 10.20, let G be a directed graph without loops, and let A be the incidency matrix of G. Remove any rule from A, and let A0 be the remaining matrix. Then the number of spanning trees of uh, G is the determinant of A0 times A0 transpose. This is very surprising. At first sight, it is not even obvious why the determinant of A0 times A0 transpose will always be the same. No matter which row we remove, let alone have such a nice combinatorial meaning. Proof. Let us assume without the loss of generality that the last row of A was omitted. Let B be an M minus 1 by M minus 1 submatrix of A0. If M is less than M minus 1, then G cannot be connected, and it has no spanning trees. We claim that the size of the determinant, the absolute values of the determinant of B, is equal to 1 if and only if the subgraph G prime corresponding to the columns of B is a spanning tree, and uh, the determinant of uh, B is equal to 0 otherwise. We prove this claim by induction on N. First, let's assume that there is a vertex Vi such that I is not equal to N of degree 1 in G prime. The degree of a vertex in an undirected graph is the number of OHs adjacent to that vertex. Then the ith row of B contains exactly one non-zero element and that element is 1 or minus 1. Expanding determinant B by this row and using the induction hypothesis, the claim follows. Indeed, G prime is a spanning tree of G if and only if a G prime minus VI is a spanning tree of a G minus VI. Now assume that the G prime has no vertices of degree 1 except possibly VN, the vertex associated to, to the deleted last row, then G prime is uh, not a spanning tree. Moreover, as the G prime has n minus 1 edges and is not a spanning tree, there must be a vertex in G prime that has degree 0. If this vertex is not Vn, then B has a 0 row, and the determinant of uh, B is equal to 0, if uh, this vertex is Vn, then each column of B contains 1, 1, and 1, minus 1, as each H has a head and a tail. Therefore, the sum of all rows of B is 0, so the rows of B are linearly, indep uh, linearly dependent, and the, the determinant of uh, B is equal to 0. The binet cauchy formula that can be found in most linear algebra textbooks says that the determinant of A0 times A0 transpose is equal to the summations of the square of determinant of B, where the sum ranges over all m-1 by m-1 submatrices 
p of a zero. However, we must we have just seen that the square of the determinant of b is equal to one if and only if b corresponds to a spanning tree of a, and that the square root of determinant of b is equal to zero otherwise. Therefore, the proof follows. You could have several remarks at this point. First, you could say, fair enough, but it could take a long time to compute the determinant of A0 times A0 transpose, or even A0 times A0 transpose for a given graph. More generally, you could say, what about undirected graphs? These concerns will be simultaneously alleviated by the following theorem. Theorem 10.21 matrix tree theorem let u be a simple undirected graph let the set v1 v2 v3 and vn denote the vertices of u and define the m minus 1 by m minus 1 matrix l0 by lij is equal to degree of vi if i is equal to j lij is equal to minus 1 if uh, i is not equal to j and the vi and the vj are connected and uh, lij is equal to zero otherwise, then u has exactly the determinant of l0 spanning trees. Proof. First, we turn u into a directed graph g by replacing each edge of u by a pair of uh, directed edges, one edge going in each direction. Let a0 be the incidence matrix of g. We claim that A0 times A0 transpose is equals to 2 times L0. The entry of A0 times A0 transpose in a position IJ is uh, the scalar product of uh, the ith and the jth row of A0. If I is equals to J, then every edge that starts or ends at a VI contributes 1 to this inner product. Therefore, the entry of A0 times A0 transpose in position ii is the degree of vi in g, or in other words, twice the degree of vi in u. If i is not equal to j, then every age that starts at vi and ends at vj, and every age that starts at vj and ends at vi contributes minus 1 to this inner product. Recall that u was simple. So there is either 0 or 1 edge from vi to vj in g. Thus, the entry of a0 times a0 transpose in position ij is minus 2 if vi vj is an edge of u and a 0 otherwise. This proves that indeed a0 times a0 transpose is equal to 2 times l0. And uh, this implies that 2 to the m minus 1 times the determinant of l0 is equal to the determinant of uh, A0 times A0 transpose. Denote that each spanning tree of U can be turned into 2 to the n minus 1 different spanning trees of G by orienting its uh, n minus 1 edges. Therefore, our statement immediately follows from theorem 10.20. Let us uh, use our fresh knowledge for our classical example, the number of all trees on n braces. Example 10.22. The number of spanning trees of Kn is n to the n minus 2. Solution. The matrix L0 associated to Kn will have uh, the following simple structure. n minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, until minus 1. This is the first uh, row. The second row is uh, minus 1, n minus 1 and followed by a lot of m minus 1. The last row is minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and so on, followed by the last entry with m minus 1. To compute this uh, determinant, add all rows to the first. To get the first row becomes all ones, and uh, the rest of rows are still stay the same. Now add uh, the first row to all other rows, to get uh, the triangular matrix, that is, uh, the first row becomes all ones, the second row becomes almost all zeros, except uh, the second entry is n. The nth row becomes almost all zeros, except uh, the nth entry is n. 
This shows that the determinant L alpha L0 is equal to n to the n minus 2 as claimed. Theorem 10.21 is a powerful tool. Let us use it to compute the, the number of spanning trees of some interesting graphs. Example 10.23, let A be a set of m vertices and let B be a set of n vertices. Connect each vertex of A to each vertex of B by an H. Denote this graph by KMN. Find uh, the number of uh, spanning trees of KMN. The graph KMN is called a complete bipartite graph. We will learn more about these graphs in the next chapter. For now, note that there is no H within A or within B in KMN. Solution of example 10.23. The matrix L0 associated to KMN has uh, the following block structure. And followed by a lot of zero, by, uh, followed by minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, and so on. And uh, the, the middle line is a zero, followed by a lot of zeros, followed by n, then followed by uh, a rows of minus one. Another middle line is minus one, followed by a lot of minus one, followed by m, followed by a lot of zeros. The last row is minus one, followed by a lot of minus one, followed by zero, then followed by a lot of zeros, then followed by m. That is uh, the first uh, m rows look similar, then the last uh, m minus one rows look similar. The same is true for columns. To compute uh, this determinant, use uh, the same trick as in the proof of theorem 10.21. That is, add all rows to the first one to get a row of uh, the form 1, 1, 1, a lot of 1 for the first half of the first row and uh, a lot of zeros for the second half of the first row. Then add this row to each of the last n minus 1 rows. We get that except that the first row is uh, ones for the first uh, half part and the zeros for the second half part, and so on. Um, but for the the row which close to the middle row, that will become 0, 0, 0, and so on until the last turn is n, followed by minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, until the last turn is minus 1. And uh, the next row after the middle row is a lot of zeros followed by m, then followed by a lot of zeros, and uh, the last uh, Row is a lot of zeros followed by one zero, then followed by a lot of zeros, then followed by m. So this shows that the determinant of L0 is equal to n to the m minus 1 times m to the m minus 1. Your sense of asymmetry might be slightly disturbed by our disregarding the vertex Vn. You may be thinking that in situations when our graph has many vertices of different degree, it may not be obvious which vertex should be chosen for the row of Vn. Of course, theorem 10.21 is true with any choice of Vn, but uh, the computation of a determinant of L0 may become more complex if we do not make the right choice. One way of getting around this is to use the following alternative form of the matrix tree theorem. Theorem 10.24, matrix tree theorem, eigenvalue version. Let u be the graph as in theorem 10.21, and let l be defined the same way as l0 in theorem 10.21, except that let l be an m by m matrix, denote lambda 1, lambda 2, and so on until lambda n, the eigenvalues of l with uh, lambda n equals to 0. Then the number of uh, spanning trees of u is 1 over n times lambda 1 times lambda 2 and so on times lambda m minus 1. Remarks. By now you should be asking how do we know that 0 is always an eigenvalue of L. The answer is that the rows of L sum to a 0 row and therefore they are linearly independent. 
So the determinant of L is equal to 0, which implies that 0 is an eigenvalue of L. The matrix L is called uh, the Laplacian of U. We do not prove theorem 10.24 here. It can be proved from theorem 10.21 by algebraic manipulations that do not involve additional combinatorics. In order to be able to use a theorem 10.24, we have to be able to find out the eigenvalues of L. You may remember from your students in linear algebra that there is no universal method for this if L is larger than 4 by 4. For nice graphs, however, that is, for graphs that have a lot of uh, automorphisms, we can find uh, these eigenvalues by some clever tricks and then use uh, theorem 10.24 to compute uh, the number of uh, spanning trees of U. We will see examples for this in the exercises. For now, let us uh, discuss one particular situation. If U is a regular graph, that is, all vertices of U have degree D, then we see that D times I minus A is equal to L, where A is the adjacency matrix of U. Therefore, if uh, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, and so on to alpha n are the eigenvalues of A, then D minus alpha 1, D minus alpha 2, and so on to D minus alpha n are the eigenvalues of A. This means that to find uh, the eigenvalues of L, it suffices to find uh, the eigenvalues of A. Example 10.25, that u equals to kn, then the eigenvalues of A are n minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and so on until minus 1. Therefore, the eigenvalues of L are n, 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 and so on until n, with uh, the last entry, 0, showing again that the kn has n to the m minus 2 spanning trees. Solution. Note that A, the matrix A plus the identity matrix I is equal to the matrix J, the matrix whose entries are all equal to 1. This matrix is obviously of rank 1, therefore A minus 1 of uh, its eigenvalues are equal to 0. As the trace of J is N, and we know that the trace of any matrix is equal to the sum of its eigenvalues, the remaining eigenvalues must be n. However, a is equal to j minus i. So the eigenvalues of a are the eigenvalues of j decreased by 1, and uh, the statement is proved. Note, a more general discussion of the matrix tree theorem, as well as a survey of a results connecting the number of a spanning trees of a graph to the number of a certain Eulerian cycles can be found in uh, reference 38. Additional proofs of uh, Cayley's formula can be found in uh, reference 23, which is a comprehensive source of uh, different exercises, in graph theory anyway. An introductory text about uh, graphical enumeration in, is chapter 5 of uh, the reference 6. A book-length treatment is graphical enumeration by F. Harari and E. M. Palmer. Structures of which uh, the greedy algorithm works are so important in the combinatorics and other fields that they have their own name and are the subject of several books on their own. They are called uh, matroids. The reason for this name is that in some sense, matroids are generalizations of matrices. The interested reader is encouraged to see reference 30.